So we really kind of explored all kinds of possibilities for Sonic. And, it, and we needed, we knew we needed something pretty compelling because I also think the only reason the studio like hired us instead of more experienced feature writers is because like they weren't really convinced that this was ever going to work. Like they hired us because they were like, well, we got to hire somebody. Let's hire these cheap guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think they were a little shocked when we came back and like with, with a, an outline that they thought was pretty compelling. And I mean, the trick really was with something like this. I mean, I, th I think the studio never wanted it to just be a regular kids movie. Like that's why they hired Jeff, who was known for doing these outrageous action like yeah. video game trailers and stuff and hired us. And we were known for doing Golan the Insatiable, which was like an R rated cartoon that was super outrageous and offensive. That's like what defined it. So we were like, but we also had to kind of guess at why they'd hired us and like, what do we do here to make this a family friendly movie, but that has, has some edge and has something that makes it unique and isn't going to just feel like Alvin and the chipmunks that we always, we also, we like, this has to be an action movie um, it has to be funny. It has yeah. to be irreverent. And it's like Sonic so colorful that it has, you know, it has to be like colorful and really visual and really pop and give, give, uh, the audience something, I mean, give the audience what they want. And the Sonic fans who are kind of like, uh, a very hyped up fan base, very active online to the point where I don't think the studio quite realized what they were dealing with <laughs> until, <laughs> until further into the process, but it was really hitting upon the idea of, of Sonic as sort of this uh, a cross between Superman and the Little Mermaid, where it's sort of like he's rather than, you know, he's a fully formed hero who comes to Earth just on an adventure because it was always going to the studio wanted him to be on Earth and have a human friend. But the question was, like, what's he doing on Earth? Who's the human friend? But coming up with the idea of him sort of becoming trapped on Earth and having to hide and just like wanting to be a part of things and wanting that human connection and giving him that loneliness and that, that, that pathos and like something, you know, where kids watching him and making him like a kid, you know, that it's like about a kid having an adventure, but without having to actually cast like a child actor who can be kind of annoying for adults to watch, but it's like, right. he's a fun animated little guy that the adults can enjoy. And the kids watching the movie can directly relate to him and imagine being him having the fantasy of having all that power and freedom, but then also, like the kids watching, they have something that Sonic doesn't have. And in a way, Sonic wants to be, to be, to be those kids, to have a family and a home and stuff. So I think we found a nice recipe and I thank goodness it resonated with, with audiences. Yeah, you definitely did.